I'm going to install TeamCity on a Windows machine. For the sake of this course, I'm going to install MySQL on the same server that is hosting TeamCity instance. If you create this whole setup for a production purpose for your company, it's highly recommended that you have your MySQL or SQL Server database apart from the server that is hosting TeamCT. And that is because if for any reason you lose your TeamCT server, then your data will be intact and you can launch a new instance of TeamCT server and retrieve all your configuration and projects. So I need to install a MySQL. TeamCT basically supports MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, and PostgreSQL. It also comes with an internal database, but that database is only good for when you want to learn TeamCT or if you have a small home project and you need TeamCT for that. For multiple users and for production capacity, for uh, using TeamCT in a company, you should not use the internal database and you have to set up either MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle or Postgres SQL. So I want to install MySQL. MySQL requires Microsoft C++ redistributable packages. So let's install that first. I need to search for Microsoft C++ redistributable. And the first link that comes from support.microsoft.com is basically the download page. There are multiple packages because I'm on a Windows 64-bit, I download the redistributable package for 64-bit Windows and I install it. It's a very small package and it gets installed very quickly. Now we need to download MySQL. In order to download MySQL, you can go to devmysql.com slash downloads slash installer. Or you can just Google download MySQL and it gives you the download page. There are two installers. One of them is the web installer. One of them is the full installer. I just get the full installer by clicking on the download button and also click on this link which says no thanks just to start my download given that you don't want to create an account with Oracle or log into your existing Oracle account. Once the package is downloaded, I run it. When the installer application comes up, click on full. When you choose full, all the components, including the connectors, will be installed. Connectors help clients with connecting to the MySQL server. And we wait until all the components are installed. Once all the components are installed, I click on next. Again, I keep clicking on next, just I go with the default settings. So the root account in MySQL, as you know, is called admin and we have to specify a password for it. On top of that, we need to create a user and that will be used by TeamCT to connect to MySQL. And that is because in case in the future, you change the password of the root account, then your connection from TeamCT to MySQL will be intact. Also, it's it's not a good uh, idea to connect with the root account to the database anyway. So I click on add user and I create a user called team city. And let's say the password is this. And I click on next. And I wait until all configuration is applied. And we are done. Once the installation is done, the MySQL shell will come up. Also, MySQL Workbench is installed and that comes up as well. So we can just click on local instance and enter the password of the root account to connect to it. In the query window, now we can create a database. I can say create database and let's call it TeamCT. By default, when you install MySQL, all the table names must be lowercase. So I just use TeamCT with lowercase characters. And then we need to grant access to a user that we just created. I mean the TeamCT user to database that is called TeamCT. So I need to say grant all uh, privileges on TeamCT dot star means all the object to TeamCT. 
and we run this script and basically we are done with mysql i can close all the clients now we need to download and install team ct you can download and install team ct from jetbrains.com slash team ct or again just google it for example if you cannot be bothered to remember the link or address of team ct just google download team ct and you get this link which is jetbrains team ct and forward slash download is basically the download page so you just download the installation package once the installation package is downloaded we just run it and we click on next we agree with the license agreement you can change the destination folder by default it is team ct folder on drive c and when you come to the choose components page make sure that you uncheck build agent we do not want to put the build agents on team ct server we want to put them on separate servers so make sure that you uncheck build agent and you click on next and wait until all the files are copied once all the components are installed, Team City will ask you to specify a port in order to connect to the basically Team City web user interface. Make sure whatever port you choose is not already in use. It's not blocked by the firewall. If you are using Azure or Amazon Web Services, make sure your security group allows uh, traffic via this port. For example, this machine that I am using in this server is basically an instance on Amazon Web Services. So if I go to the console of Amazon Web Services, you will see that this is the server I'm using and it has security groups. If you don't know much about Amazon Web Services, security groups are basically like firewall settings. So in the inbound rules, as you will see, I have opened port 80 for IPv4. So what that means is that if you use HTTPS, make sure you open HTTPS port. If you use an unconventional port, make sure that port is also open. So we click on next. And these are the basic configurations of Team CT. The only config you need to change is basically server URL. Because we are going to put the agent on separate machines or separate servers, the agents will try to connect to your Team CT server. So they should be obviously able to find your Team CT server. Now, if the IP of your Team CT server is going to change, you need to create a domain name and uh, use that domain name. So the main name will be assigned to your machine or to your load balancer, and then you use that address. In my case, I'm using an elastic IP, which means this IP won't change. So I can use the IP once again, if you are using any IP that may change, or if your server is publicly accessible on the internet, you better just register a domain and then use that domain to connect to your server. Or if you have Active Directory, for example, and you manage your local domains, create a local domain and use domain instead of IP. Because again, if this IP changes, then build agents that you will create soon, they will not be able to find the ser server. So I click on save. In the next page, it's asking you that which user account should run the Windows service of Team City. Just leave it to system account and click on next. And we start the service. As soon as you start the website, what happens is that you need to configure database and everything. And that is only done the first time you ever run Team City. I think it's much easier if we go back to Chrome. I'm not a big fan of Internet Explorer. So I can go to HTTP localhost. And this is the setup screen of Team City. I click on proceed. And the first thing we need to do is basically to connect to our database, which in our case is MySQL. So the default option is the internal database. As I said, only choose this when you install Team City for learning purposes. For production use, you can use SQL Server. A lot of companies already use SQL Server for their own products. So it's not a problem if you use SQL Server. You can also use Oracle. Again, if you already have it, MySQL is a good option. And also PostgreSQL is a good option. So I choose MySQL. So when you install Team CT, it doesn't come with the database drivers. And that is because of licensing problems. So click on download JDBC drivers and it will download the drivers that it needs. Then you can now connect to the database because in my case mysql is on the same machine i can use local 
host otherwise you have to put the address of mysql server in here database that we created was team ct and username was team ct and i gave it a password it's going to take a while to create a database and add all the components so we have to wait once all the components are installed you will be redirected to the license agreement make sure that you read this properly and you click on accept license agreement and i uncheck normally the ones that says send usage information and i click on continue the last step in setting up team city is basically to create an admin user for example we can say the user is admin and we create a password for it make sure that you keep this username and password safe because that is basically your root account and as you see now team city is up so right now we have team city uh, set up but the problem is that we don't have any build agents right now so we cannot build anything in the next lecture i want to explain how we install team city on a linux based machine if you don't want to install anything on linux you can skip the next session and after that i will show you how we install and create build agent servers once we have the build agent servers then we can basically go and check out the source code and compile it and create packages i let you uh, have a look around in team city and we start working on build agents soon.